Good morning, church, and uh, welcome to another time of morning devotion. My name is Ken Mark from the Donna Congregation. So this morning we'll be looking at the book of Mark. For some time now, as a church, we've been going through the series on the book of Mark. And uh, this week, particularly, we've been looking at Mark chapter 14. So uh, today, we'll continue with Mark chapter 14 from verse 43. So I'll read it from here. Mark chapter, four, chapter 14 from verse 43 to 52. And immediately, while he yet spake, commit Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whosoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straight away to him and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are you come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you took me not. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. And there followed him a certain young man, having a lining cloth, cast about his naked body, and the young man laid hold on him. And he left the lining cloth and fled away from them naked. Amen. My God, when I approach your throne and all your glory see, this is my stay and this alone that Jesus died for me. How can a soul condemned to die escape the just decree of a chain oh how can i get free no peace can all my efforts gain but jesus died for me what glorious love redeeming love that bore my shame on calvary Shame on cat. 
So this is basically the short story telling us about the plot and the arrest of Jesus. Most of us here, while we are still in uh, you know, Sunday school as kids, we would have learned this popular story about the plot of Judas to, uh, to betray Jesus Christ. So it's a popular story, but there is something I believe the Holy Spirit will want us to take away from the story this morning. And that is how does this story impact on our lives today as Christians, in our relationship with Christ, uh, in our relationships with one another. How does the story affect us? Is it still relevant for us today? The chapter itself opens up with this plot to arrest Jesus. But the chief priests and the scribes decided to change their mind because of the feast of Passover. But Jesus himself was not unaware of the plot to arrest him. In fact, in verse 10, it was recorded that Judas himself went to the high priest, the chief priest, to make arrangement on how to betray Jesus. And while Jesus was eating with the disciples, he told them, the one of you who dip hand on the table with me will betray me and, uh, no, uh, uh, sell me off to be arrested. Now, back to verse 43, where we read, we were told that immediately, this is one of the words that we find so much in the, in the book of Mark, the use of the word immediately which conveys you know, a sense of readiness. The word immediately, actually in the Greek word is euthenos. Euthenos actually means straight away, straight away. So the book of Mark is a book that actually shows the readiness, the readiness in giving us the gospel of Jesus, the readiness of Mark in not wasting any time, but just he is on it. It doesn't show any reluctance, but readiness immediately. So we keep hearing immediately, immediately. So it, it is the gospel of you know, immediately, the gospel of urgency and immediacy. So we are told here that immediately, while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and went with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayed Jesus had given them a token saying, whoever I shall kiss, that is he. Take him and lead him away safely. One of the things that we have to understand from this story is that although it has already been prophesied that Jesus will be arrested and killed, it has already been prophesied and planned by God at the beginning that Jesus is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the whole world and he will be betrayed. But one important thing is that there was no mention in the Old Testament that a man called Judas is going to betray Jesus. So obviously, Judas fell for it. Judas fell for it. He fell for the temptation. Somebody is going to betray Jesus. But, Jesus, but Judas fell for the temptation to fulfill that prophecy. In fact, verse 10, as we said before, he willingly walked up to the high priest, to the chief priest, to begin to negotiate on how to betray Jesus. It's as a result of his greed, greed for money. Greed for money. So that was the tragic flaw in the life of Judas. 
some of us that might have, you know, you know, familiar with literature. That is what is called a tragic flaw, which is often, the, you know, the, the, the weakness in the lives of some heroes that often lead to their destruction. So Judas could be seen as a, as a kind of hero because he was the, one of the disciples, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. But he allowed this weakness, the demon of greed, to lead him into the plot to betray Jesus. And one significant thing here is that he did that with a kiss. He did that with a kiss. I mean, I was looking at it. Why did Judas not just walk up and tell you know, the, the chief priest and the scribes that is him, arrest him? I mean, point directly to Jesus and signal that is him. But he did that with a kiss, a sign of honor and love. So I still believe somehow Judas loved Jesus, but still he allowed his greed for money to take the whole best of him. Kiss on the cheek stands for honor and love. He still loved Jesus. He would have pointed at him, that's him, arrest him. But he did that with a kiss. The, the, the question here we have to ask ourselves is this. Look, we can, I can look into my life and see, are there some flaws in me that I need to work on? Are there some flaws in your life that you need to work on? Because so if these things are not dealt with, sometimes there are other things that lead to some, you know, some ruin and destruction in the lives of people. His own flaw, Judas here, was the flaw of his greed for money. And it eventually led to his destruction. He did that with a kiss. I was pondering on this, you know, this scenario. Today, so many of us are publicly also worshiping Jesus and giving him honor. But it, it is also possible that in our lonely places or in our interaction with others, we could be betraying the same person that we worship. We could be betraying Jesus knowingly or unknowingly. We could be denying him. We could be exhibiting some, you know, some character traits that betray him. Although we worship him, although we honor him. So it's a reflection this morning when we look at the, the, the flaw in, in, in the life of Judas. It's also a time to also look into our lives and see the flaws and see how to work on our personal flaws. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Romans 6 12 actually says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lost thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. But look at verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin, it could be our weaknesses, it could be our flaws, it could be you know, things that we do wrong, our mistakes and other things. Let's not allow the power of sin in one way or the other to have dominion over us. I mean, God wants us to conquer these things before they conquer us. That was the problem that Judas had. If Judas had been able to conquer the demon of greed, he will not, be, he will not see himself in this position. But let's make progress. In verse 44, And he that betrayed him had given him a token, saying, Whosoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. And then laid their hands on him and took him. And the one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest 
and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are you come out as against a thief with the swords and with the staves to take me? If you look at this story very well, Jesus had the power to have saved himself. But I believe he willingly, because of his determination to fulfill the mission of offering himself as a sacrifice for humankind. So he willingly gave himself. He, he told him, I was preaching daily in the synagogue and in the temple. You didn't arrest me. You were not able. We are told on some occasions they came to arrest him and he spoke and they all fell under the anointing. So he had the power to have resisted arrest. He had the power to have smote them into blindness. He could have called the angels to fight for him on his behalf. But he even rebuked. We were told that a young man cut off the ear of one of, one of, one of the guards that are there. And we, are, we know that this was Peter because in the other gospel, Jesus actually told Peter, no, you don't have to do this because those that live by the sword also die by the sword. So he had, he was in control. He had the ability to smote them or to, or, or, or to, you know, to, to, I mean, or to call the angels to fight on his behalf. But Jesus was arrested by love. He wasn't just arrested by, you know, by the chief priests and the scribes. What arrested Jesus was his love for mankind. His love for mankind. He willingly gave himself to fulfill the mission of dying for our sins. Today, sometimes we're in the position where we, you know, we are provoked to fight, to do some certain things. But can, can, can we be able to restrain ourselves just because of the love of Jesus? How do we interact with one another? Sometimes in our interaction with other people, there could be offenses. Offense must surely come. But can we say for the sake of the love of Jesus, yes, I have the power to do this. I have the power to fight. I have the power to, 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 to declare a thing and it shall come to pass. But for the sake of the love of Jesus, let me bear. Jesus willingly offered himself because of the love he had for mankind. I put it here that he could have resisted the arrest or strike them blind, but he allowed love to prevail. How are we able to restrain ourselves in the face of provocation? Because of the love of Jesus. If you look at the last verse, well, I don't know why it is there in, in verse 51 and 52, but we know that the young man who was running away naked might have been included there to reflect the degree of loneliness that Jesus went through. Every single person deserted him, including the young man who even ran naked. Some Bible translations and uh, 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 you know, uh, Bible commentators actually said that this young man is Mark who wrote this scripture that we're reading. But we don't know because the Bible didn't give details on that. But the most important thing is that everyone deserted Jesus at the point of need. And Jesus was arrested. But his arrest was specifically and mainly because of the love he has for you and for me. So he was arrested by love. And this morning I pray that in everything we do, let's allow the love of Jesus to prevail in our relationships, both with Jesus Christ himself and with others. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you for your word. We just pray that your word, O oh God, will make more meaning. 
Go ahead, O oh God, by the power of your spirit. And let this word, O oh God, let the grace in your word impart and transform our lives in our daily living, in our daily activities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.